And so the, to, to cuddle the cat, you know, and whatnot. And in my dream, I said to my mom, oh, that's funny that you come because if I hadn't come, if you hadn't come, I was going to come and see you. And my mom passed away in three years ago. So it's it's really, anyway, but so I, I don't... So it's funny you should say that because I was just going through my Skype list and I saw Araya had a thing saying, rest in peace, mama, you know, I'm going to miss you. So I don't know if her mother has just passed away. Um, I must message her. I don't know how recent that Skype update is, but I don't think I saw her in London last weekend and I don't think her mother had died. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's quite primal. It's quite primal. Are you an only child? No, I, I, have, I, have, I lost both of my brothers. And, uh, and, and one of them had, thank God, two sons who are now my only my family left, wow. uh, two nephews. And they are, they are just like a replica of my two brothers, thank God. And, um, and in, I, I am in one of their flats, which is the saving grace. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for that. And it's it, given the circumstances, it's, it's amazing, an ideal solution. At this, but I still have a hard time being happy here. You know. I know. My heart hurts. I really, I, I really, um, I I really have a sense of you. You are missing. Like I hadn't met Belinda before the weekend. And I stayed just two or three days there. And I just kept saying, Sabine should be here, Sabine should be here. And I understand, you know, they're so nefarious. You know, if you think with your head, you know, the, the lengths that they go to, nothing, nothing should shock us. But my heart says, come back. <laughs> my heart says, come back. I'm just being honest. You know. Yeah, but you know very well. I, I can't do it. I mean, I I really feel that I, there's absolutely no point in me coming back until the fate of the children is decided. And this is why I put this document together to consolidate the case into all of the adults and all of the children are at risk. And but today I found out that Luxembourg is not the right jurisdiction. And tomorrow I can it's I can only go via the commission. And the commission for the failure to, for the UK government to act, and uh, but meanwhile there's somebody else who wants to go to the metropolitan now uh, to, to return the children, but and then they, that, that, and so on. Instead, we got the BBC as another enemy now. Thank you very much. Who needs that? But sometimes, you know? sometimes the worst attack. Sometimes I call it when 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 the devil overplays his hand, because when Poffley made her they call it a judgment. I don't see how it was a judgment because there was only one side in there. It was the inappropriate courtroom. It was secret family court. It should have been criminal court. But sometimes what looks like a disaster actually is overplaying their hand. And I, don't, I, I hope that the even normal BBT viewing public will smell a rat. I mean, it's, it's insulting to the intelligence. It's uh, it's offensive. You can you can make a lie go past people if you if they're asleep and and it's kind of built up. But the they're they're going too far. Too they're going too now. Huh? They're trying too hard, and it's like overplaying your hand. And so, I think with Poffley you know, as a, supposedly a justice, it was uh, all sorts of illegal, uh, you know, libelous and slanderous, inaccurate and, you know, not according to protocol. It's, it, to me, they're making a lot of mistakes. And to trot dear, obviously it was a very planned strategy because it's almost like, it's like the PR exercise for the week. Okay, we're going to do this and then we're going to do this and then we're going to finish up with radio four and it's going to be an onslaught and by the end of the week we'll put it to bed it's a pr strategy and i have a feeling it's going to backfire it's hmm. too it's too it's too it's too transparent there under unless i am overestimating people's intellect i know we've had mass mind control for decades but i can't see your average Joe public buying those those the BBC's line. I just it's, t it's too soon after Savile. 
you know, remember they cancelled, there was going to be a Newsnight expose of Savile and they cancelled it because it was, uh, you know, they were going to celebrate this, that, the other and have this, that, the other happy time programme celebration of Jimmy Savile or something obscene. So that's too fresh in people's memories, surely. Mm -hmm. I feel they're on the run. I feel they're running scared and they're making mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's hope Let's hope so. And, and I feel as, feel as well, just tell me if I'm wrong or being naive, I feel that there's a, a sense of waiting. I watched Belinda's update. I, I missed it. She made an update outside the Royal Courts of Justice on Thursday. And there's a sense of waiting for the other shoe to drop. Have you heard that expression? No. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely expression. It's like you're just a sense of... But I think uh, we have to carpe diem we have to seize the initiative not wait not wait for more evidence of lies and because we know all that it's all true so i i when you it it concerns me when you say you have to stay out of the country until the children's fate is decided because i think you have a big impact on their fate well I don't know, I'm actually sad to even think about. Um, I mean, the other dream besides my mum was actually where I was crying over my flat and that I, that people, that there was a damage and my neighbors had come in and I was crying over my pretty things that I had put in. It's a violation. It's a violation. You've just been, it's, a, it's almost like a, a script for. Uh, you know, causing trauma, you know, to take everything familiar, your sanctuary, your your home, you know, it's it's almost like a deliberate tactic to have you slightly off balance. Well, yeah, but, you know, it was my, my and Belinda's decision, you know, they, they didn't. Decision. It was a good decision at the time, the same as Ella. It was a miracle that both of you got out of the country safely, quickly. That was a miracle. And what that allowed was everybody realized it's, if I don't do something, who will? Because it took away the sort of follow the crowd, you know, we'll all let Sabine do it all or Belinda do it all or somebody else will fix this. No, everybody had to look inside themselves to do something. And that's been a real breakthrough. But just, I totally agree with you leaving. I agree completely. But it's interesting to me that you say you feel a little bit out of uh, sync where you are. It doesn't feel right. Did it... Did it feel right ever, or you just feel like you're camping? Oh no, it's a, it's it feels I'm. Uh, given the circumstances, I I'm in the best possible situation. I'm uh, there's, there's you know the, the, but but I feel isolated, nonetheless because I have. Um, I just don't have my kind of people around me, do I? Oh. And uh, the, 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 I have to travel, I have to make an effort to meet people whom at least I enjoy company with, but they are not, they are enjoyable company, but they are still not my kind of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did, the worst is actually that soon I should be able to do work on my data, my scientific work, and the programmer and the guy is in London. I can't be there. That's, that is, is literally the worst of it all. Yeah, and somebody asked me today how even are Abraham and Ella surviving? It's like if you make your income, I know we can do an awful lot online, but, you know, whilst everybody's displaced and disorientated, um, how do you how do you keep how do you keep your income? Well, I'm not, no, my income is my rent. I get my rent. Uh, yeah, my rent so right. that's just a matter of finding the right machine. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't. Not asking you personally. I'm just saying. Somebody said to me today, "How are Abe and Ella surviving? How how are they? You know, how are they living? It's like so. I suppose where I'm coming from, and I'm perfectly willing to be wrong. Where I'm coming from, it's not intellectually you can operate anywhere because your mind and your your approach and your 
you know, your expertise and your experience. That functions anywhere that you have computer. I just think when a bully does something and it's wisdom in the first instance to avoid, but I just feel there will come a time, if it hasn't come already for you, when there's something very powerful, nothing to do with your intellect, in coming back and facing the bully, which is the establishment. Well, I, I, I honestly, I haven't looked and considered at all. Uh, I, I accept that Penny doused the other day that June looks like a likely month for me. And that gave me hope. And it occurred to me that it so happens that there is a seminar in Brussels in, where I would definitely like to go. And it occurs to me that I'd rather come in via Eurostar than by, uh, from Brussels than via a plane from Berlin in Luton, just to, get, to make it easier for people to, to say hello to me as well. And um, um, so that kind of, I find that kind, not kind of nice and, 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 and livable with, you know, two more months here. Yeah. And it also is, I mean, I, given the fact that, that the, the kind of legal process is now, I think, for somehow powerfully has shifted from the legal process to the PR process. Yeah, it's shameless. It's shameless. It's embarrassing. The, uh, they, the, yes, and they, therefore, they... Uh, ha, let me just ask you one other question. What did you have in mind for the interview at all, Angie? Uh, the way I interview is I just, I just talk to people and see where they're at. Obviously, people want to know any news, any update, anything, you know, any pulling together of it. Obviously, the news for today is the BBC's PR uh, charade. Excellent. So, yeah. so are you already recording? How are you? Any news, any any recommendations, and, uh, you know, just it's really just brainstorming. To me, interviewing is just chatting over as if you would be in the kitchen for coffee. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> so you are already recording now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, so, yeah, sorry. Yes. Good, good. good. No, yeah. all right, then that's that's fine. It suits me fine. It, because... can edited. it can be edited if we, you know, if we started just chit-chat, chit-chat, you know, it can be edited, but it's not my field of expertise, so I prefer to just upload raw footage, people being honest, people being authentic, and people telling their truth. Well, and... I mean, that that's absolutely terrific. I mean, the, the interesting thing is that Nilu asked me the other day all of these legal questions, yes? Which you <laughs> may have noticed, and the article is uh, this um, uh, quite interesting thinking about going to uh, to Luxembourg, and I like that. But um, I equally like the conversation, and uh, you know, so she had pointed questions, and you, we are just chatting and brainstorming. That's and that's particularly useful because of this BBC thing and because you've been involved yourself. Because once again, I was actually both misled and out on a limb. I went, I I travelled to this studio to, uh, uh, to to I had to wait, and and Yuli, and they were not ready with the technical end. The guy who had talked to me was a guy called Joe Kent, and, and then I was interviewed by a woman called Mel Melanie, whom I had up on Twitter. And um, I thought for some reason or other from the emails about by Joe that it would be half an hour mainly or just me, until I realized through you that there would be other people. Yeah, so I think that was, uh, I, I didn't know what was going on. She just asked us outside of Christchurch. Um, I'm doing a program about this. Would you mind uh, if I ask you a few questions? I didn't know. I thought it was going to be just a spontaneous interview on the news that night or something. But she said, no, it's a program. So I, I've only I'm, I've only discovered as it went. But I'm a very wounded. I'm very hurt. I'm disillusioned. I feel like, you know, I, I it's made me a bit cynical. I came out <laughs> feeling very angry because mm -hmm. she said so clearly there is no evidence. And she said there is, it's a high court judge who said it, you know, basically. And so what I find interesting, and that's what I said to her, but 
um, and I got during the, our conversation, I got more and more irate and such that I then said at the end, well, I'm really curious what you're going to cut or I wonder how you're going to cut it. And she said, oh, no, we will have to edit, but we won't mis misrepresent. But now it's I mean, it may very well be that she doesn't know about the other program that came out about Ricky. Right. It well, may very she, she contacted or some one of her researchers, you know, this um, fabulous block, um, Hampstead Research, uh, Jackie Farmer. Yes. Right. She contacted them or one of her researchers did asking for an interview. Yeah, and they, Kent. that was Joe Kent. Yes, he's the same yeah. guy. He kept yeah. he kept he kept pushing me, wanting to talk to Ella, and I said, uh, and, and I sent him the two links where he can he can get her statements, uh, the uh, the interview with Alfred and her statement where uh, that she where she had read out Nilo's text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, and also they already did a hatchet job on that, which uh, the Hampstead Research blog has corrected. It's very strange because um, when I emailed uh, Melanie today, I said, so are you aware there's forensic, uh, you know, there's forensic evidence that links some very high class, you know, the most serious class of pornography to Ricky Dearman's uh, account. And then UK Columns said, oh, no, um, that, that's a generic uh, billionaire company account and multiple servers. And Jackie had to rebut even UK column. But I just wonder, because we tipped them off by me saying to Melanie, are you aware of this, like, you know, evidence? Um, and I think and then they got in touch with uh, Jackie Farmer. Will you talk to us? Will you talk to us? No, you can send me any questions in writing and I'll answer you in writing and I'll blog them. And then the next thing you see UK column news saying that the IP address server address it wasn't actually Ricky Dermans but that was accurate and there's proof of that so Jackie very quickly was able to rebut that but it makes me wonder I'm not accusing UK column of uh, disinfo but it makes me wonder Belinda suggested on Thursday that the strategy going forward it might be better to keep information close to our chest until you know and uh, I don't know because until when there's so much evidence, it's enough to overturn everything, but nobody will listen to it. Hopefully, no, uh, Belinda is always on the close to chest, and and I don't know whether if whether and ever she ever then gets it off her chest. So I mean, I can't be bothered to to, to think that way. Uh, we all have our own way. I I I am more a shout from the rooftops, also, you know. But I feel like today. They did a quick cleanup. They realized, oh, my God, shit, they really do have evidence linking Dearman to pornography. And they kind of messed with it. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. people are too clever. They're, now they're downloading stuff. They're screenshotting stuff. They're keeping evidence because they know that it can be disappeared very quickly. As soon as somebody's onto it that you found something, they they can like try and erase it very quickly mm. but, but people are uh, at first in the early days of just ordinary people investigating there was some valuable things lost because they were disappeared so now everybody is documenting 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 so it won't fly but it does leave you a sense of despair who's, if if the judiciary won't listen if the politicians won't listen it, it, who's going to listen and if they listen who's going this is why I think it would be spiritually powerful to come and face the bullies because the judge won't face them down, the BBC won't face them down. The the ah, everybody... that's uh, interesting. That's I mean, I am I have faced powerfully once before, and Belinda said I was like granite, you know, and yeah. and and I am her enemy. I am. Um, uh, she said in her judgment, even she spoke about the thinly veiled threat. Remember, it all boils down to the to the position statement that I wrote with Ella for the hearing of the 26th of January. Either we return the children or we expose online. And that I wrote, uh, and, and Belinda uh -huh. and Ella came out of that hearing saying she has no intention of returning the children. And yes. by Saturday, I had the petition up. Yeah, that was a watershed. I think I think it was fantastic. I think honestly. This, this, uh, uh, I've said this before. I, I think it was perfect how it happened. Perfect. How it's not, it's not worthy of debate, you know. But the just and the way I, I approach slightly differently. I try not to make enemies of anybody. I might err uh, towards naivety, 
But um, I, don't, I, I think too much protesters or activists are portrayed as just angry people. And, and people don't want to hear too much angry, angry, but everybody must have a conscience and a child or a nephew or, or a, you know, some, every human being has a sense of right and wrong. And so I do get angry. I got angry last night and I was, I was raging, but I try not to, to hate, like, you know, I hate what Poffley did. It's despicable. I don't even. I can't even watch Dearman. It makes me makes my flesh crawl. Even I, I only watched a tiny bit. I, I saw enough. I don't want to watch him. Ugh. You know. So, but I I just don't take that approach of you know being an enemy of this one, this one, this one because we would be enemies of the whole system because there's like see it feels like seventy percent corrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you get tired just being enemies with everybody. We're all human. We just want them, just just want people to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's just. But I think we all have our different style. We all have something to contribute. Our different personalities. Our nobody's saying. You know, all we're saying is this isn't right. Stop it. Yeah. Expose it. Tell the truth. Stop it. You know, so if you can't direct this, uh, because if you can't direct this legal paper to Luxembourg, what is the procedure you have to go through? Well, I'll find out tomorrow uh, from the commission. But because you see, this is what I learned the hard way. I, 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 did you see my six minute, my six minutes of passion in Brussels last year in March? Oh, fantastic! That was my first. That was why. That's I this is when I learned that and how the commission exists and, if you like, runs the show. And I then organized a meeting with them in December. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, not much has happened, except when I was in Brussels again at petitions committee meetings, the chairman wanted to do something with the commission. But, but these things are happening without me being around and, of course, one of the purposes of me being in London is to go to, to Brussels once a month, which I can't do anymore because Berlin is a hell of a lot further away. So uh, where do we go from here with the commission? I mean, I just, if you like. Just, just on that subject, did, I'm sure you noticed when you were speaking so passionately, it was, it was gripping and it's rare to see such honesty and passion in that setting. But the two facilitators, I don't know, the lady seemed uncomfortable and didn't quite know what to do with it. And the gentleman was saying, no, let her speak. No, she has more. Give her, she let her speak. So I don't know what that dynamic was about. You know, I know it's a human thing to be uncomfortable around truth telling when it's uh, horror. But I just wondered what was that? What was going on there with her being so nervous about you talking like that? Well, it's irrelevant. It's because these are MPs who are not in Parliament anymore, you know. So th this is the tragedy. It was all before the election, and now there's a new committee and new MEPs, and there's a new great Swedish chairperson now. And uh, um, but and the secretary has left. But the secretary was the one who had said he was a UK person. He said the UK can't have it both ways: be in a club and not play by its rules. And yeah. that's that's sort of the wording that keeps me going. Uh, that, that is how the UK plays Europe. They take the goodies, but they they just stay a little bit distant. Uh, you know, they bang the drum. England, oh no, we're we're sovereign. And nobody's going to tell us what to do. They are having their cake and eating it with regard to Europe. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, how to beat that, or whether to beat that, whether it's worth beating, is, is in, a, in a way it's sort of tempting because, yes, I feel at home there in Brussels, you know, it's the spirit of Europe is, is kind of, uh, it's gripping and, and, and terror, you know, the ode of joy as the basis. It's very, very, um, yeah, I feel very much at home. It's very appealing. At the same time, I... I find it hard to make it work for us at this point. So the commission is the next step, yes. Um, I spoke, the person I spoke before with is going to, 
deepen what we've done with the judicial review with the Metropolitan Police, because let's face it, in terms of bottom line thinking, the, the, the two kids, us, they ought to be returned. That has always been on top of our to-do list, yes? And, and time, is, time is going. Every day hurts my heart. For Precisely. And, and nobody seems to care except uh, they just want to keep and keep and keep them. So who can get the children back? Well, either the court or the council or the Metropolitan Police, presumably. I mean, that's at least what that... God, would... forbid, God forbid the father. God forbid. But it's happened many times before. Well, that's what he wants, so that's what he's going after. Well, I don't know, I don't know. Somebody made a telling um, remark about that because I know somebody who fought viciously with corruption to get half custody of his children and then he realised how much work it was and how much, uh, you know, it didn't suit his lifestyle and he just came, after the mother was devastated, he came to her and said, okay, well, it's too much, I, I, I you know, I, I'll just have them when it, when it works for me. So I, I don't know. I just know that um, the, the establishment, um, they must be in the same conundrum because if the children heal again enough to speak truth, like if they unwire all this horror of Tavistock and being manipulated and hypnotized and, you know, prompted and terrorized, but if they recover again and start disclosing again, I don't know if, um, I'm sure the ones that are doing the cover-up must be thinking, uh, how are we going to prevent, you know, how, we, how can we release them to anybody? They might speak again. And that's, 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 that's what I pray, that the children stay safe and uh, that... Uh, that no rash decision is made to because truth 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 will come to the surface it's a season things are coming to the surface people have fought for 40 years to try and get the truth out and it's a season where evil is rising to the surface and nothing can stop it nothing it's nothing can stop it being exposed so then my advice to the people trying to cover up is like do you know what? Your your best hope is to get free and get help. And I've heard on pretty good authority, I'm not going to say names, but I've heard that some named people from the cult have have tried to reach out and get help and get free. Terrified. I see. I see. It's not just a legal battle. The legal system is broken. It's very apparently broken. Or it's being flouted. So we have to come not just legally, not just intellectually. We have to come spiritually. We have to come from the heart. And we, and we, and we have to embrace that th these days are the days for evil to be exposed and people to choose which side they're on. That's well, right. ironically... I was supposed to have a hearing with Powfley tomorrow. Wow. And I, I certainly didn't consider flying back for that. I, 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 well, okay, okay. And uh, I'm only, you have to find your truth, but my heart is saying, Sabine, 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 come, 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 come. We'll all... You know, we'll all surround you. We'll all, you know, Europe is behind us. America, there's the international people helping actively, researching, lobbying, investigating. Uh, you know, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. That's true, but it, it hadn't occurred to me, Angie, to kind of stage it and plan it. I was, I had to respond to this guy from the, from the court he, and he said Skype is impossible and I asked for an adjournment for as long as possible and he has to come back. I I just he put I'm, trust me a second, just tra track me on this. Put yourself in the abbot's shoe, right? And and the truth is if she 
trusts that little part of her that heard the truth and knew it was the truth, she would have to risk her job. And if you backtrack to Jill Dando, possibly risk her life. And then everybody that wants to do the right thing, on some level, not as dramatic as you, but on some level, they have to face their fear. They have to say, I'm willing to risk everything with the intention to stay alive and well and make a difference. And so I think that it's just like the children risked everything. You know, Ella and Abraham, yourself, Belinda, so many risked everything. I'm not recommending um, reckless behavior, but I just feel that if we are asking the public to, or even journalists like the BBC, the, the few that are, you know, honorable, if we are asking people to be honorable, even if they're afraid, what better way than we show them how to, you can be afraid and still do the right thing and trust, you know, for me, I trust God and I also make sure people have my back, you know, I just, you know, I, I just think we can't, this is why I have the sense of everybody waiting for the other shoe to drop, everybody's waiting and that's giving opportunity for there's not just this terrible BBC interviews. There's also, um, they're starting to make uh, satire, comedy, uh, you know, dance music and trying to ridicule this. And it's out, it's offensive. It's outrageous. But if all of us are slightly, like, waiting, it makes a vacuum for them to just do their thing. It, it's sickening. But anyway, it's just I, something... I, I, I think we need to go into the offensive rather than the defensive, and that's why it's certainly that Europe was good. And also, ironically, Belinda is using the my text uh, for for the BBC, you know, but it's for some other arm of the BBC again. I think it's a third arm actually. I think it has again may not have anything to do with either Radio Four or the Derbyshire program. I, the, I mean, she sent me the producer letter and and was. And, and I, I, I think I'm, it was only thanks to you that I'm beginning to wake up to the fact that, A, I, have, I can withdraw my implied consent. And after this I uh, took legal program, advice. I took legal advice today because, uh, you know, I, I, I still am an optimist. And the legal advice, I took legal advice and I was advised that without written consent, it's not consent. And you can withdraw right up until two hours before the show. But they recommended hold off on saying cancel my contribution. Hold off till Thursday. A lot can happen in three days. Ah, so, you see, this is why I gave an interview to a very good guy on, on Vice.com, and he wanted quite consciously to counter that. They have a readership of 900,000, and, uh, um, and, and he, he, it's an article with 1,400 words and with pictures. And I encouraged uh, Belinda to support that as well. And uh, so now you also are, are coming in on the BBC line. I mean, it sort of felt on that in that boat as alone as in the whole situation now, you see? The thing that hurts me most is when good people believe the lie, like like um, UK Holland have done fabulous work. And so there's a vacuum. Even the good people in you know, all the alternative media get, uh, you know, they can think, oh, well, maybe that's true or whatever. It's like I heard a journalist, I saw a journalist, and he said, I had some vital information 30 years ago, and I let it slip. I knew somewhere inside me it was the truth, but I was told it was a hoax, and I didn't check, I didn't sort of honor that instinct and I let it go and he said it was the biggest regret of his career in journalism because wow. it turned out to be absolutely true you know it was uh, some big uh, politician that's now you know well the survivors the victims knew without a doubt back then you know time is a luxury time is a luxury so I don't know I don't know I just feel like it's that same thing of if we're waiting for somebody else to do to do whatever's going to change this it, we're missing it. Each person has to find the hero in themselves and each person has to hit that brick wall where their one where their mind is saying, Oh no, 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 don't do that. Oh, oh no, no, this could happen, that could happen. 
and then they have to say, shut up, do it anyway. That, you know, just, you know, feel the fear and do the right thing anyway. That's Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly why I wanted to go to Luxembourg. And only today I found out Luxembourg is not a stage for us. So I, and, and tomorrow I have to, therefore, the next one. But I will find that the commission is, is that route is going to be too slow to, and I mean, and I did, but I did send the document not only to the commission, I sent them to the, to the other key people in Brussels as well, I either around the petitions committee. <sighs> No, 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 each, each, you're doing, I don't think this to undermine, people are doing, uh, like I said, in America, in, people on far flung places in the world doing phenomenal daily work on this, and then I'm shocked that they live in Texas or they live in, you know, I know it, it's, it's not about geographically where you are, it's just about... No, but, okay, come on. There is only one court of justice, which happens to be in Luxembourg. There's only one petitions committee and a EU parliament that happens to be in Brussels. I know, but I think in a way... That's geography. You know, I understand that, but I would challenge... I mean, I know this pedophilia and satanic ritual stuff, it goes all through globally. Yes. It it goes all through Europe. It's in Canada. It's in Australia. It's in uh, America. It's in uh, you know Fiji, Philippines. It's 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 a global cancer. Yes. So, so we can't assume, even though we should be able to assume that Russia, uh, rather than actually, that's interesting to put the tongue back. We should be able to assume that Europe. You know, the international law should stand, and this law should stand. But we're seeing over and over and over again, no respect for the law. There are certain people above the law. And it's not just in England. It's in Europe, too. It's in Belgium. It's in it's in France. It's in, you know, this flouting the law is getting more and more brazen. And for a scientific mind, that's hard to digest because you think, well, that's wrong. That can't be. That's wrong. But it is wrong and it is happening. For me, it's like, oh, it's such a love blessing. I feel like the fact we have to the mind. It's, it's in our principalities and rulers of this present darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And we have to also have a spiritual strategy. You know, we have to, it's not about that Luxembourg will help us or Brussels will help us or Sabine will rescue or so and so. It's not, it's, it's a, it's a, it's deeper than that, and the corruption runs deeper than that. That is That's certainly true, and I certainly because it is a spiritual battle between good and evil, and everybody has to decide for themselves uh, uh, which side are you on. That's for sure. And uh, and uh, and and the, the the president of the European Parliament can make more of or a different kind of a difference than I can. And um, I don't know if that's true. I, I, I mean, I I. I I I don't I don't recognise all those structures in book because I mean, I'm not a, I'm not an analyst I you know but I don't, I have no faith in those structures anymore I have no faith in anything but what can I do what can you do and uh, you know spiritual you know my God whatever my prayers you know good does triumph over evil I don't have any faith in the structures of the establishment whether European whether British, whether global, I know there's nefarious goings on and uh, just doing the, us doing the legal protocol properly and thoroughly, I don't think that's going to be enough. That's just me. I don't want to be cynical. I really want us to end or, or to go forward, but I don't think it's just we have to have a plan. I think we have to have a breakthrough. Well... well I mean, I, I, it always helps to talk, so... Yeah, it does. I really do agree. I, talking to Nilu got me to produce the document, which is a consolidation of the case and addresses the bottom lines. Three adults in exile, two children in care, 18 at risk, and two women. That is the current bottom line of this case. In eight schools... And, and one church, and none of them have been addressed. 
Yeah, clearly, clearly it's outrageous. I think we have a very great window of opportunity because the elections are coming up. Well, I wrote to all of the MPs and uh, uh, I've happened to have found Matt Taylor in Brighton as an independent and put out his uh, manifesto, no pedophiles in parliament, an absolutely excellent uh, list of points, which uh, you may have seen, but I published it on the Whistleblower Kids blog because it was really very synchronistic and uh, uh, um, clean and clear. He asked exactly for what we want, a royal commission and, uh, um, and, and the right powers to the police. Because Police against child abuse is definitely... The police, um, the police is a good, a good, a very good thing to focus on. I was on the march uh, on Saturday outside Trafalgar Square Spot, and I see real opening opportunity with the police. And the police are the informers that they already have security guards lined up, ready. You know, like in America, they have their actual law strategy. They're practicing it all this summer. But the police are a real key. I see... Uh, I was shocked how open and how uh, empathic and how the police, I think there's a huge opportunity there uh, for the good police to actually get brave. This is, you see, everybody's got to get brave at the risk of losing their job or losing, being in danger or being harassed or losing their pension, whatever. Everybody's got to, but I was very encouraged by the way the police were reverent on Saturday. They didn't even want to touch a survivor. They, they, they didn't, they, they absolutely didn't want to arrest anybody. They didn't want to, they were, fa I was shocked to how open they were. So, and I think that's a real key, a real opening is get well, the police. Yeah. <laughs> you were there with the police in Parliament Square. That's what you were talking about. Square, and that you see, there was about a couple of hundred around, maybe one hundred, one hundred fifty went up to two hundred. There was a few, but quite a few outside Parliament, and then there was a, quite a few on Trafalgar Square, and then there was another group in the middle outside Downing Street on the other side of the road. But they all kind of started to flow, and they started to support each other. So the the Trafalgar Square came for a flash of traffic stop and stayed for an hour. And then we had to put it then, very organic. And there were moments when the, in Ireland, certainly the police would have got aggressive. And they didn't even arrest a single person. They didn't even uh, didn't want to. Now, I noticed a difference outside Christchurch on Sunday. The police, the police outside Christchurch, they weren't aggressive, but they weren't so, like, in Trafalgar Square and outside Parliament, they were really listening. The police were really listening. And uh, Arai was talking to one, and he kept calling her back. Well, tell me this, tell me this, tell me this. They really were listening. So we have to look for every every access point we can find. You know. So you know, I don't I don't have answers except for I know after what the BBC did, that's the first time I felt shocked at being fooled. And when I went last weekend, you know, it occurred to me, you know, a journalist that's active online, I don't have a great following, but doesn't matter. They've stopped worse than me. Look at Melanie Shaw. They've had her brutalized and locked up now on and off for just months. So it occurred to me, you know, I could be taking risks here. And I was fine. But when that BBC betrayal happened, I thought, wow, this is dangerous to even dare to oppose this level of uh, cover-up and, you know, but what else are you going to do? You're going to sit on the beach and pretend you don't think all the time about the children? I, I can't, I try and switch off and I do make an effort to switch off and be with my family, but it never goes away. This doesn't go away. You can't unhear what those children said. You can't unhear it and I think universally there's a lot of people with hearts hurting and wanting to do something, you know, so, you know, I guess we just wake up each day and say, what do I do today? What, that's, what, exactly, what? Exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly what I'm, how I'm moving from day to day. And uh, I'm curious whether you know that Christine, the American woman who got arrested, was she with you at 
church? No, she wasn't. She decided to lie low. She was so shocked by her experience as well. But now she woke up again and she commented on the BBC. And her comments were deleted in no time. Did you see that? I saw that. And I also saw there was a... Um, there was, I know there's this FBI thing with her and so on, and something that concerned me was one of these um, mockery videos that's made. It seems to have all the close footage of the people that were there. They, the first time I think it was that Carol was outside Hampstead Church and she was filming everybody. But now all those people have turned up on a mockery video saying about these crazy activists, you know, with this hoax. So I just don't know. I, I felt badly for her, but um, this is, in a way, a little bit making me more cynical. I'm the type that trusts everybody. But how did her photographs or her footage turn up in a, a video for the other side? I'm Unless her, you know, I mean, it's plausible she was in prison. You know, there's all sorts of ways that they can do things but when I saw I saw that first where she's filming everybody and people are like hey, you, know, what, you know what's the deal and then and then here we are a few weeks later and there's a video with all that footage you know I don't know I felt like she was treated a little bit badly a little bit yeah. I don't mean by the establishment I mean by the um the activists in the UK because oh, um, badly this is why one of her comments she put out I'm not playing sides the father's father sides get me into prison mother sides tell me to stay away from me but but then then she I, I didn't plan on going here at all but then when Ella Abraham released but she does not have a she put it, uh, taking people who came to her website and linked it straight to, to film or something really nefarious. And I understand that she was angry and hurt, but it was like, whoa, you know, there's children at risk here. Why would you express your anger like that? I, all I'm saying is I felt a little bit badly that we had, not me personally, but I felt like possibly she had been bullied by what should have been her peers and possibly because, uh, you know, she's American and they're more loud and more in your face or, you know, she's wealthy and she has a beautiful whatever, you know. So I was trying to process all that. A couple of things, you know, first of all, she did in anger when Ella said, please, she doesn't represent me. She uh, all the that's coming up said dot com. It was automatically I I'd refer to uh, I think it was website or something really shocking. And then now the footage, and I'm perfectly willing to be wrong because I know that even in two two days in prison they could have downloaded everything off her phone. Well, they do. Well, yeah. I mean, not off her phone, but of any of anywhere on the website. But then the, this hoax stuff that just comes with the territory, as Belinda told me years ago. So I don't go there. Full stop. Exhausting. Too much negativity. Can't yeah. cope. Don't want to cope. I'm only interested in what, trying to find out what I can do. Yeah, and I agree. I agree because I, you would drive yourself crazy. You would. Yes. Drive crazy. But it is not insignificant to know, as we are talking BBC, that her comments got deleted in no time yeah, on the I BBC side. Understand, and it's not insignificant either. I said to Melanie, this end of the, the most serious husband on Felix Lichtenberg, within a couple of hours, that IP has been uh, disguised, that IP has been uh, messed with. So no, nothing is insignificant at these times. Nothing no, is. Insignificant. In other words, we are, we have just. Uh, uh, we are on a journey of discovering more and more enemies, or the yeah, allies of the enemy of the enemies as well. The enemies are coming more forward. If uh, who would have thought uh, that the internet companies would be as bad as they turned out to be? I mean, instead of even focusing on that, I think I think what we need to know, and what I wanted you to know, is even though you're isolated sometimes. Listen, I think it's the thing of the, the, we're seeing more evil and more people acting evil, 
but there's a silent army ready, ready to step forward. And I do think it's a case of we don't realise how many people actually are, are woken up and are ready. You know, this is why I said this is why I said if you do even in June, whenever, if you get to that place of coming back, there's people have your back, you will be shocked. You will be shocked how many people strangers that just say yeah i can't sleep properly this is i know something's not right what can i do just somebody that has your back you know i believe more more good people standing in the wings ready and what we have to do is just look and see how how can what needs to be done for those people to step forward and I it's, do believe it's, it's, they would step forward if, if you were in danger or if, if there was anything tangible they could do. Not everybody is, uh, you know, gifted with uh, international law, or with time to do investigation or with online. I bet there's even mothers, you know, don't even go online, but they're ready to do something. That's, that's I, hear you. I hear you I hear at the same, at the same time. time. I've, I've always been against being prescriptive. I don't like to give people to-do lists, no, but there's I... No formula. There's no formula. No, there is no formula. That's also true. But it certainly uh, encouraged me, A, to deal with the Powfley challenge. Um, and don't, don't, don't see her as the enemy. And why the court hasn't come back to me. Yeah. And B, it may very well be that Powerfully prefers not to see me than having to see me as well. I mean, it is, uh, but, but at the same time, uh, maybe it is impossible at this stage. This is, that is actually what you're pointing out. No, that I'm not pointing out anything's impossible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. That's what I believe. Nothing is impossible. The way I would like to approach, I can't quite get there with Ricky Dearman, but I would aspire to the best chance we have of overpowering and overturning paedophilia is that every paedophile feels they have an opportunity somehow to themselves get free, themselves to, to and not be lynched. Lynch mobs, you know, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So we have to address the evil and still give the people practicing that evil, even if it's only that much of an opportunity left in them of decency, that they can see that it's not them that is going to be, it's not them that, that you know, some people want to lynch all paedophiles, but it, it, won't, it, it won't stop it. The best thing to stop it is to, to somehow address the evil and firmly let them know you know, you can escape too. You can stop doing this. You can stop doing, you can get help. And, and this has happened already. At least two of the ring of named people have already reached out and said, how do I get out? How do I get help? Help me, help me. You know, so it takes an awful lot of compassion and empathy. I'm not, like I said, certain people I can't even look at them. But I know that we, if we try to lynch every paedophile, there's too many. There's too I know, many. I know. This is, this is the lynch mob maternity doesn't work for me either. There are not enough prisons, there are not enough judges it, uh, to get them into prison. It just won't work. That's why I want, I want therapy, therapy, therapy for all of the victims and all of the perpetrators. And every, oh, most survivors, and I've met a lot, most survivors will say, do you know what? If you just tell the truth, and stop what you're doing, you're giving me back my sanity. Your money is not, I'm not chasing your money. I need someone to believe me, and I need this to stop. That's and why I just put out the post on with three, with the three videos, uh, which says that is, this is, yes, believe, it, it, it tell me the truth. It's, it is happening, it is happening, it is happening. The denial is, that is, the, the denial culture is part of the problem, that's for sure. You invalidate a human being's sanity. Yes. They, something horrific has happened. They break through every fear to tell, and then and then they have to go back into hiding, or they're discredited, or they're mocked, or they're 
legally dismissed or they're thrown a few thousand. I know one survivor was offered 10,000. His solicitor already wanted 20,000 off him just for giving him advice. The, the survivors are the most humble. The ones that have survived are not dead. They're the most humble and they would be the most gracious where they didn't need to be. You know, they have no 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 duty to be gracious. And I think the survivors are the ones that would say, if you get help and you stop what you're doing, just don't let me see your face again. But I don't need revenge. I don't know. Anyway, uh, can I ask you one personal question? And please don't answer if you don't want to. And I don't want to make you cry. But I'm just curious, how did you lose your only two siblings? Did they die in war or was it health? Or, or If you don't want to talk about that, that's fine. No, no, my older brother uh, died 15 years after he stopped smoking from lung cancer. And my other brother died of throat cancer also from uh, smoking. But both were just 50. Wow, 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 wow. Well, that's a whole other, that's a whole other, we should have a talk about that sometime as well. But um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry. And I'm glad you have your nephews. I'm so glad you have your nephews. Thank you, boys, <laughs> for looking after Tanta Sabina. <laughs> so anything else you want to add? Uh, well, I will now get my email off to this court listings guy. Um, <clears throat> ask about the, the adjournment, ask why I haven't heard from him. Um, because and I'm I'm just I, I'm facing I am I, I just I feel encouraged by this conversation to face the, the evil in Palfrey. <laughs> that's yes, that's yes. what what yes. what is interesting as an outcome. So, I mean I I wanted to avoid. It's interesting you see I had to file in hard copy here because. That's the way the system works, and it was tedious, and, and I did it, and, and it was in response to this penal order by, by, made by Parnet Council to take off the Internet what I hadn't put on and what was irrelevant and which was beyond anybody's control. So it's completely ludicrous. You Nobody know, it's can outdated. It. I put the genie back in the bottle. Nobody, I've seen everything all up there again today. That's like... It's a tunnel with no cheese. They will never get that off the internet. Well, exactly. So, so it's such a ludicrous thing. So even my application to set it aside has become. Well, you want to know. see me? They want to see me in court because that's the way they keep their, make their living, and they have the opportunity to put handcuffs around me. Yeah, I know they have the opportunity. But I don't think it will happen. I no, honestly. That's no, what you're don't. saying, and that's what you're encouraging me. Now, but it's only the court angle, Angie. There is still the police who are after me for different reasons. The police are softening. Trust me, the biggest shift that I've observed is in the police. The politicians are still all thinking about the election. That you know, they're thinking about they don't. You know, there's all sorts of blackmail going on at high levels. The biggest shift I've seen, and, and I, it, it was tangible and it was shocking in a good way. Believe you me, I believe the police have uh, vastly shifted. Even with this Lord Janner thing, a chief constable had the courage to come straight out and say, this is outrageous. This is outrageous. You know, I, I, I am encouraged by what... Of course, there's some paedophile police, many, high up, Freemasons, elite paedophile rings, all of that. But I see a big shift in the police. I don't think, I think if they even tried to put handcuffs, I think you'd be shocked at where people would come from to help you and save you. And, you know, and it's easy for me to say that, you know, because it's not my arse on that particular line but I really I really do believe that I think as much as we're seeing evil come and show its face there's plenty people are just shifting and and the biggest shift I've seen is in the police okay. and I hear, you, <laughs> I hear you have a good solicitor I leave it with you I didn't want any you know I'm just telling you what my heart says is I want you home I want you home I never met you but I just feel come on mama come on come on back to base back to base for the next round. 
you know, and you will know when is the time and, and what is the circumstance. But I just want you to know, you know, that, that there are, I believe it's a growing tide of support. Okay. Um, which, is why, which is why they're going crazy making stupid BBC programs and making stupid videos and trolling like lunatics. They know, they sense that the public is not behind them. The public's not going back to sleep this time. That's my sense. So anyway, I, I, I appreciate you. And, um, you know, I'll talk to you. I'd love to talk to you another time about cancer and, and uh, smoking. <laughs> I appreciate it, but I'm sorry you lost your brothers like that. And, I'm, you know, I really appreciate your time. And I'm sorry I took so long, but never mind. If I had interviewed you yesterday, I still was so naive about the BBC and Melanie Abbott. I was so hopeful. So we could have made all sugary sweet interview yesterday and then today felt like, you know, so sometimes it's good to get, uh, I've set my face like a flint. Sometimes we need to be tough. I, I need to toughen up maybe, you know. Live and learn. Okay. Vielen Dank. Bitte, bitte. Until the next time. Yeah, bis nächsten Mal. Okay, thank you, Sabine. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Uh, you love when I say bye. that. Okay, bye-bye.